Hey guys, welcome back to the Modeling Edge and good morning. So if you've been following on my Instagram, which you can find at Jaeger262, and again, as always, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, you'll know that I'm doing a series with a fellow modeler who used to be only into Gunpla, and for any of my modeling guys that don't know what that is, that is model kits based off the Japanese anime Gundam. And he is starting to do his very first armor model kit. And so I've been running a series on Instagram and live streams, and I'll be continuing that throughout the next few months. So please, if you get a chance, go over to Instagram and tune in there. But don't worry, I will be uploading all those lives here to YouTube. Now, before we get into this first look, and thank you for joining me on this first look, I hope you're as excited as I am to see what's in the box. Uh, this is left over from one of my live streams where I have another vehicle I'll be unboxing later, another kit. And it was an introduction for him and for anybody watching the live stream into just basic things you want to look for as you embark on a 35th scale project like this to help cover some of the things you will need to mod or need to detail on your kits. Now, of course, the Ryfield kit we're about to look at uh, is one of the most beautiful and renowned Abrams kits on the market right now so there's not too much to mod there so i didn't get too much materials this is just a basic guide so plastic putty of any kind i'm using vallejo because this is what i sell to customers at my store this and tamia so i wanted to use it myself same thing with this we just started bringing this into my hobby shop and i just wanted to do a quick test with you guys to see how well it works and see if it really does make a difference to see where the glue goes but other than that basic materials would be any type of wire. This is copper wire. Um, it's a pretty small gauge. And what you do is you're gonna strip that and you can use that for any kind of aerial antennas, making ropes, making tie downs, anything like that on a kit. For extra fine wire, I got this wire cutter replacement. It's 48 inches of it. Steel wire made to be heated to clean up uh, model railroad layouts. Brass tubing for gun barrels. Again, aerial mounts any kind of hollow pin. Uh, these are about the same size as the grenade launchers on the rye field kit. So there's gonna be a lot of unique things you can do with that. And this is not the only amount of plastic sheet you'll need, but I got a basic plastic sheet to help cover styrene. Uh, and the reason you wanna do that is anything you got a scratch build, you're gonna need styrene or metal. I've seen a lot of people do Abrams kits where they'll actually make their own details out of metal. I won't be doing that. I think styrene's simpler for beginners to use. I know personally it's a lot simpler for me to use, so that's what I'll be doing. And then of course paints. And for this project, I'll be testing out Hataka lacquers. For anybody that doesn't know, they are a Polish lacquer company that has recently developed into one of the forerunners in painting for scale modeling. They came out, I think in 2018, beginning of 2019. And right away as people started testing them, the orange line here has become top of the line for matching realistic colors, for ease of painting, and for getting the detail. They sit up there with Mr. Color or Mr. Hobby from Japan or Mr. Paint from Czechos from the Czech Republic that I use. And so I'm gonna test them out and see how well they look on the Abrams. So that's pretty much it for just basic materials. Now let's get to the main event. And this is a kit I've wanted for a very long time. The 135th scale M1A2 SEP from Ryfield Models, another Chinese company, uh, but highly detailed kits. And this version allows you to build the Abrams SEP, the Tusk 1 and Tusk 2, as well as the M1A1 Tusk. So older vehicles that are still in the field that got this upgrade. I will be building the M1A2 Tusk 2, but you could do all three. Now, quick look at the box, because this is something that um, my Gundam guys didn't realize, is models are designed in CAD these days, not physically. And so, it's how it used to be. And on the back of boxes, just like Dragon used to, they'll show you not only a layout of all the photo etch you get, but some of the, just the CAD designs that help put this kit together. And then you have a beautiful color call out from um, Ammo by MIG on the other side of the box. Ooh, I can get it open. J 
just jam-packed with parts. Now this kit has around 1600 parts. It's on the very high advanced side of military modeling. And that's why I wanted it. Starts with the color guide. Each of the vehicles, full color, very nice. And then go straight into instructions. And there you look to be in incredibly detailed instructions, which is always appreciated. Some parts are in green to differentiate between the M1A1 and the M1A2. So anything in green is the M1A1. Anything in black is the M1A2, which is nice. So you should be finished with the tusk here. You get to this part, you're finishing with the M1A1. Full three markings for the three different vehicles used, and then all of your caution markings and other indicators, lift here, army at designations, all kind of stuff. I haven't seen a lot of armor kits with this many decals, so that's always nice. And then the photo etch fret covers not only basic engine grills, but, um, the armor plates on the front of the turrets, mounts for the machine guns, tie downs, sight apertures. It just gives you pretty much everything you need. Uh, the braces for said grills, these are all braces that tie the grills down to the tank. Just really nicely detailed sheet of photo etch metal. And here's the plastic. So I'm not gonna be taking this out of the box just yet. Hopefully you can see just how thin the rails are. Nothing on this kit should need to be sanded off or redetailed initially, but I will still be doing that just to show off those techniques. And hopefully you can focus in, but there is anti-slip molded into the turret already on all the places that need it. You could always file that down and do your own if you really want to, but you don't need to on this kit, I don't think. There's that, and then What's really nice is they even have serial numbers already welded into certain parts. So like I said, Rockfield Models has become one of the greatest model companies in the past four or five years, and they are just incredibly impressive. You have the M1 Coppola here, and that's the Gunner's Tusk Coppola. Anti-slip on all of the surfaces. The grenade launchers are pretty nicely hollowed out. I will be drilling through some just to give it more depth. But all the main turret pieces there. The armor pieces. And here's what I really wanted to show off. You can see it. The thickness of these armor plates are almost perfectly in scale. So again, you shouldn't need to trim any of these down. Straight out of the box, all the armor for the guns on the turret... Um, what holds these Tusk ceramics together are already pretty thick, or I mean pretty thin, sorry, for what they would need to be in 30 foot scale. And then of course, ejection pit marks all on the back. You will have to clean those up, but at least they're not in highly visible areas. There's that old NATO style of grenade launcher that goes on the actual gun barrel. Two different versions of the driver's hatch, more anti-slip, and the main fenders and gun parts. And the barrel here is a three or four piece barrel. So you got you put these two pieces together, you put this together, then here's the equalizer. There's the actual tip of the barrel, and then you put stack these together and finally have this piece here. So it's a really intricate multi-piece barrel not a huge fan of them i like just slide molded barrels all the way through or i prefer metal but for this kit we're going to use the kit one and see how nicely it goes together then your two sprues of road wheels and the thing that made the ryefield kit really cool is that they went in and put the right so most companies will just put round bolts on most of these tires and you'll see some of them have them here but on the inside of the tire, they switch to the actual hex nut that's on the other side. And to have that molded in 30 Fisco, if you can see it, is really cool. So for anybody who's a rivet counter out there, which is what I'm trying to achieve with this project, is do something a little bit more detailed than what I currently do and go back to what I used to do when I competed. This is one detail I don't have to change and punch out a styrene myself, and neither will you if you build this kit. So those are the correct bolts for the Abrams tires on the back pretty cool 
bathtub style hull. Pretty standard, very nice. Got a lot of detail on the bottom, but there's not a lot of detail on the actual hull. And then for everything like this, of course, you can see you will be adding the actual armor bits to it. And some more cast markings, which is pretty cool. Now, I have no idea what those cast markings say. They're just in scale. And I'm pretty sure these are just um, Ryefield's actual markings. I don't know if they're actually modeled off of real Abrams or not, but because they're in scale, I'm not going to be shaving them down. I'm just going to keep them whether or not they're based off of real factory markings. But I'm, somebody will correct me on that in the comments, please, because I haven't seen too many Abrams yet. I haven't done that walk around to see what those markings look like. Then multi-piece tracks, but the cool thing about these is that here's all the pads, rubber pads for the tracks. Here's the actual main skeleton of the track, the two pins that go on either side to hold it. And then the brace. The reason for that is using this jib, you will be able to make these tracks like the old men kits completely functional. And so they'll snap together like metal tracks and they will move along with your vehicle and we get ammunition some other uh, details the guns which are really nice and i really want to show you, that 50 cal is warping but they are completely drilled all the way through i mean the detail on this kit is amazing and of course slide molded barrels i mean it's just incredible so this is from their old 1991 m1 kit they just gave us that for its reuse. No reason not to be more ceramic plates. And then here's a really cool thing. It comes with, and I did not know this, not only all the periscopes you'll need for clear parts, but a bunch of different little clear parts. And the coolest of which is water bottles and soda bottles in 35th scale. And that's really amazing. I did not know they were going to put that in the box which is a relief because i was already trying to find aftermarket bottles for the complement the complimentary kit i'll be building next to this but they actually have it in the kit so that's really incredible i'm telling you guys this would be an amazing project for anybody who likes modern u.s armor it's absolutely gorgeous there's that reinforced plate for the bottom of the Abrams here. Like I said, you'll be attaching that there. So if the hole looks a little bare now, it's because I haven't built the kit yet, obviously. And then one piece top, well, two piece top hole. And again, just incredible detail. So part of the reason for having wires and all that other metal stuff that I will be changing on this kit is to do stuff like uh, these grab handles, I'll be cutting off and just making my own to make them look a little bit more 3D. But you really don't have to for this kit if you don't want to. And again, there's already marking plates. Or, I'm sorry. This kit's just so incredible. Out of the box, I used to build Tamiya kits and Dragon kits, which Dragon is really great. They used to be the main Chinese company next to Trumpeter. Uh, way back in the day, but I remember adding cast numbers, Archer fine transfers would make 3D metal numbers you could put onto your hull and paint over, and all kinds of stuff, and, you know, learning how to make anti-slip, but this is all, it's all already molded for you, and the well lines look in scale too, I might change some of them, but just initial, first initial impressions are, it looks in scale, the well beads don't look that bad at all, these might have to get changed a little bit, but I don't foresee myself doing that right off the bat and i mean just the detail in these hatches and how it's molded this is a separate piece from this to get that extra three-dimensional effect it's just it's my first ryefield kit but this is absolutely incredible and finally the extra armor pieces and the pieces that will make up the side skirts so on my version you won't see the side skirts because of tusk one of the big things to change on any Abrams kit, and it looks like it's even this Ryefield kit, is just these wires here. These are as thin as they need to be, so once you cut off that flash there, they look pretty good. I just replaced my metal wire. Uh, the really thin 
gauge wire. We're gonna put it through. So you just use that. It's way too thin. I don't know if you can see it for this. And what you do is you just take three strands like you're making a rope or a tow cable and you put it there and it looks more realistic than the real thing because it's not just a straight metal. It's an actual metal rope or metal wire. But other than that, so far, I will be detailing as much as possible and like I said, making my own handles. But this kit is absolutely incredible. The only gripe I have with this kit, and that'll be the final thing, is the way that they do their um, instructions is some parts will show you where to put decals as you're building it. But as far as the main markings go, there's no point in the instructions to show you where you want to put those main decals. And the reason I thought they might do that is just because they put them on here and they do. So go to the color callouts and just look there. Um, this one doesn't have any decals, which is kind of weird, but, um, oh wait, I just noticed something else. Um, Hey, what I was saying is, I'm used to decals being in the back. They end with the construction, go back to the front where you see the paint guide, and just like an aircraft, so I'm not used to this with armor kits, because it's you have a color guide, and then sometimes they'll put decals on it, but mostly with airplanes, they'll show you the decal guide for the um, with the paint guide. However, for all the really tiny decals, uh, like lift here and all those symbols, you're gonna wanna look around there. But here's another thing I didn't realize this came with. And then it's already been too long, so I'll stop the uh, open box. But it comes with parts to make coolers. Coolers, search lights, um, another cooler where you can put the actual water bottles in. So this kit came with some pretty basic but really nice detail parts to make this thing look more within the real world environment in which it exists today in Iraq and Afghanistan. So absolutely incredible first impressions of this kit. Uh, again, the uh, Ryfield models, M1, A2, SEP, three and one. Incredible kit. I cannot wait to start building this. So I'll be doing Instagram lives again in the future around this kit and I'll be uploading this to YouTube today. So if you wanna see me build this or you know, you just want to wait till I upload certain parts of it on YouTube, you can do that. But if you want to see me build it live, please join me on Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about this project. I mean, straight out of the box, it's already an impressively detailed kit. Just incredible. So thank you so much for uh, joining me on this first look at the Ridefield Abrams. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in seeing more series on armor modeling or ride field kits or anything like that or just to tell me about your experiences with this kit or any abrams kits always like to hear from you guys and what you guys do so thank you and i will see you next time